All right, welcome back, guys. It is uh, September 15, 2024, and we have an edition of the Weekend Pocket Change Market Report Outlook for you guys to uh, to peruse here at your leisure. What coins are selling out there that we have all found going through bank rolls, maybe perhaps cherry picking off of a local coin dealer, cherry picking eBay even? Uh, I mean, that's where all the sales are coming from, and you know, believe it or not, um, you know, another man's trash could be your treasure, you know, and um, that of a lot of other people as well. And that's the common practice that we call cherry picking is the ability to recognize an error of variety or perhaps a key date that generally is either overlooked or just completely missed altogether. Um, it could be also uh, a lack of education, you know, um, a strike through can look like a strike through cap die. It could look like a struck through greaser, struck through anything for that matter. And uh, th there's a lot of different uh, aspects to uh, to everything that we talk about here. And it's important to know at the very least at the grassroots level, what you should be looking out for. Uh, if something looks a little bit strange and you have a feeling that it might be something extraordinary, might as well hold on to it and, you know, find a professional that can help diagnose what you have or attribute that variety you know um that's to help you sell your coins on uh, on any selling platform because if you're able to you know do your thing on ebay and you have thousands of people at your fingertips to use at any given time my friends you're going to do really well um so we're going to take a look at sales from about the last 12 to 24 hours it's been very busy here lately on the secondary market of course you know we're we're uh, kind of on knocking on the doorstep to the holiday season. And uh, this is generally the time of year where the, the fever pitch can be any more higher. So now is your time to strike and get yourselves ready and prepared to make something happen here. You know, uh, people are looking for an extra bit of income. That's very important. Things are not as cheap as they once were. And the power of the dollar, well... You know, it's not nearly as strong as it once was. All right. So, um, and with that being said, I sell on the platform whatnot. I, everything I do on eBay, I supplement it with a few different other avenues. Whatnot has been one of the most tried and true platforms that's just growing to an exponential level. And I want you guys to take part in that. And because of that, Whatnot has issued a massive promotion for new sellers. So, if you like what you're seeing and you have been using the platform as a buyer, I want you guys to take this into consideration. Whatnot will match up to $150 of your first amount of sales through the first seven days. So you sell $150 in product, they're going to match dollar for dollar up to $150 on every single one of those sales. So, you know, selling 150 bucks, it's going to be almost like selling for 300 bucks. So join the hottest live auction site today. They are prepped and ready to go for the holiday season. And that's the big kind of driver for this promotion that they are offering to any new seller. If you want to quickly access their application to join up, I have the referral link down below in the description box. They are looking for motivated sellers today. And in addition to that, we have a premier Friday US type of world showcase show Coming up here this Friday, September 20, 2024. Of course, we know 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, the usual start time for the Friday show. I would um, be more than happy to see all of my usuals there, and I want to see more new people as well. And again, we're gonna have we're gonna do it up in the best way possible. We're gonna have the most exciting coins uh, that that you could ever uh, imagine, and you know, you might be able to pick some up at a really good price. So, hope to see you there and uh, join up to either be a buyer or a seller or both. Um, my referral links, again, will be down below in the description box as a buyer and a seller. As a buyer, if you sign up under me, you get $15 off your first purchase. I mean, who doesn't want free money, right? That would be strange if you didn't. Uh, so, let's go ahead and jump right into the selections that we have here. We have a couple dozen to talk about. We're going to kind of go as fast as we can through these so be on the lookout especially on some of these more modern dates of lincoln shield sets you could come across things that look like this 
It's a 2020 Lincoln Shield scent. And yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. This one is a little bit off center. And not to mention, it's also got something called a partial collar, um, where the collar is a little bit tilted. So that all plays into uh, the strike and how this thing is a little bit off center. You're going to see kind of like a stepped edge to the off center part where the collar uh, kind of makes contact to that area. So that's how that happens. It's a pretty neat looking coin and to think that you know the newest stuff that's being produced by the mint is generally flawless think again my friends you know coins today are still being produced by actual humans humans that have you know error tendencies and oh, that's okay people make mistakes all the time um so the for this first coin here it's sold for eight dollars okay it doesn't seem like a whole bunch of money but keep in mind when we are selling in any capacity whatsoever you have to combine the least expensive pieces to the ones that will make you more money. All that money goes into one giant pot, and then you enjoy it as, as you see fit, right? We don't discriminate stuff that's 5 bucks and under compared to stuff that sells for 50 bucks and up, you know? I, me, personally, I will take all the sales. I even, even sold stuff as low as $1 to $2 on certain occasions, and I could care less because at the end of the day, I'm making a grip of cash selling it by this way all right we have another one here a 2022 you see we were two years newer here and we still managed to find pretty gosh darn the same type of mint error right here off center you got that partial collar you can even that step, see that step edge right there um and you know this one is far from perfect it's got a little bit of rim damage as you can see all around the obverse of the coin so it's not without its warts, but again, there's going to be a buyer for this coin nonetheless. This one ended up selling for $16.55 with a total of five bids, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty good for a coin that's barely two years old. So again, you just never know what you're going to find out there. Um, part of the success to hunting for coins is going to be consistency and quantity. The more coins you go through, the better your odds are going to be to find pieces like this. If you go out to the bank and you buy two bank rolls in the you know the quest for finding that five thousand dollar banger, I mean your odds are going to drop quite a bit lower. All right. So again, do not ignore the small stuff. Pay attention to everything. Look at every coin. Assess what you have there. And another neat one here. Uh, these all, by the way, are from the same seller, so they've been finding some pretty good stuff. Now. Some would say, gee, Sean, this is not findable in a bankroll because it's a double struck coin. And you have that extra little tab thing right there. That's the off center uh, secondary strike portion, which is like 95% off center. And it's like, oh, there's no way that this thing would circulate. Look at this thing. Do you think this thing looked like it was found on day one after it was struck? Absolutely not. Just the color alone, the staining, the carbon spotting. The circulation wear. I mean, this this thing fooled a lot of people. It, it really did. And that's that's kind of the, the story that we tell ourselves is that we can't find coins like this. But you could tell that this one has played a huge role in paying for that cup of coffee or for going to pay for something else, you know. It's, it's extraordinary to believe that this thing had been through many hundreds of hands before it was finally found. So this one right here, and to give you an idea of the value of such coins, the 73D here, $46.87 with 15 bits. Bidding was active and very furious on this one. And uh, you love to see that. You love to see that kind of bidding activity for coins that are perfectly imperfect is what I would say. And for a coin that obviously had circula circulated through many, many hands and through many registers, yeah, this is good to see. And we also talk about paper money. Don't ignore the paper. Everybody loves spending the paper, let, let alone not spending as much of the coin part of it. 1976 $2 bill. I mean, you know, it's it's iconic. This is like an iconic piece here. Uh, but this is on the list for a different reason. That's going to be that slight misalignment shift of the overprint. All right, so you can see 
all the green ink, the, the district seal and the serial numbers are all shifted a little bit, all right? which means the actual subject sheet, uh, which normally has 32 or 50 notes on it, is a little bit tilted a little bit when they were doing the overprint here. Um, so again, very very collectible. They call these misaligned overprints. This one here is sold for $19.49 with five bids. It's not a dramatic type of misalignment, but one that ended up paying dividends. How about, you know, 10 times your money here, folks? Um, there's the reverse. The reverse looks perfect, and the note is in great shape. Here's another one right here, my friends. So I've talked about these particular errors quite a bit here over the last month because a lot of people have been finding them and they've been selling them. This is a 1935 E $1 silver certificate with what they call a gutter fold, all right? So a gutter fold is caused by simply just a wrinkle somewhere on the subject sheet. That's pretty easy to understand. Uh, the wrinkle is on the sheet and it's printed over, thereby creating a a inkless gutter area on the note. So that's after you've stretched out that wrinkle and it happens too. More than you think, all right? And there's a reverse showing that gutter as well, which means that at any one point during the printing process, that wrinkle was not stretched away, all right? So this one here sold for $53.95. Pretty good amount of cash, uh, considering that gutter folds are quite common out there um, in not only circulation, but some of the older notes as well. Um, so again, they're kind of the lower end of the totem pole of paper money error, but always be on the lookout for these. You just never know where you're going to come across them. If you see a wrinkle on your note and it hasn't been stretched out, try giving it a little bit of a tug and you might be surprised. One of the coolest varieties, bar none. Uh, this thing is very well known. Uh, it's in the red book. It's been talked about all over social media. 1939 Jefferson Nickel with what they call doubled Monticello or Monticello, however you pronounce it. Uh, but anyways, this one right here is an FS801 double die reverse, and it is one of the strongest. Now, take a look at this coin. Again, perfectly imperfect. It's got a lot of digs and contact marks. Um, you know, it's better off being just a raw collectible coin. Not even worth uh, trying to grade. Um, you know, probably anything north of AU, I would say, is a worthwhile grade to cut to you know um send off to pcgs or ngc so we when we look up close look at the doubling on monticello especially toward the last like five letters of that word and then all across five cents you can see all of this crazy doubling on this one uh again very popular coin 32 dollars and 13 cents with nine bids always going to be a hot selling coin uh, we also have a pair, okay? This is a two-for deal here, 1992 and 1998, it looks like. Lincoln Memorial Sense. The 92 is a little bit uncentered broad strike, and then we have an off-center struck 98. Um, keeping in mind that usually off-center strikes on copper-plated Zinkins will produce what looks to be a doubled profile on Lincoln. You can see that on the 98 there. So don't think that that's anything more different than what it is. It's because it was struck off-center. And that plating is so thin that it leaves a lot of opportunity to fracture and then split from the actual devices. Um, so again, these are both out of collar strikes. The collar was not engaged when these were struck, uh, thereby creating some pretty um, eye-catching type pieces here. So with a two for deal here, $24. Okay, this is probably a good opportunity to buy these two and sell them individually for like 20 bucks. Double your money. So recognize opportunities to pick up group lots or bulk lots in the hopes that you could sell each piece individually, put them up as buy it now listings, and then just let it rip. You're going to have to sit on a few of the coins for a while, and that's okay. That's all part of the game. But, you know, if you're reasonable with your prices to where it's not going to alienate the crowds, then you're going to do okay. And I do okay quite, quite a bit well on these pieces over many, many years. Here's another uh, great misalignment error note, uh, 1969B, $1 bill. You can see the misalignment, especially on the right side of the overprint there. The green seal is shifted southward. So, um, yeah, another great example here, quite minor. This is a very minor misalignment, but don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, depending on the look of the note and uh, the type of shift, 
what that will help determine the overall market value like this one ended up selling for 89 dollars the seller had it as a buy it now listing and as someone liked it okay it's it's going to matter when you do a buy it now listing um that you have very clear photos and you know just have the faith that you're going to get that one person that's really going to love this note all right and collectors they're all different all right they, they're not all cut from the same cloth so we kind of have to uh, again really believe in our craft here you know if we're going to become e-commerce professionals on collectibles we have to adhere by kind of like this very loose standard um and if you do that you know things are going to go your way right like they always do with other folks that i've mentored over the years um here's a 1976 uh two dollar bill there's all sorts of weird stuff happening with this one you could say it's a misaligned print which is the base number two print on the front of the note that's that black with thomas jefferson all that um it looks miscut which could be the case as well and that's all kind of like playing tricks on the eyes of the BEP employee that's actually doing the cutting here i mean look at the reverse um quite a bit shifted here so um you know there's definitely some stuff going on here it's again it's a very visually eye-catching note this one had circulated quite a bit as well this one ended up selling for quite a hefty premium and i think we could all understand why because of the multitude of different things happening here hundred ninety one dollars and eighty eight cents and that's on 21 bids that's again that's that is absolutely incredible um 1993 one dollar bill again doesn't look like a whole lot of stuff going on here uh and the note had obviously been through many hands it, it's got the circulation where to prove it check that out that's a full front to back wedding transfer all right i mean that is damn that is awesome um that's a nice dark color too which means it was probably like first blush you know like one of the first notes sheets that had picked up that uh that leftover ink on the impression cylinder and had transferred to the other side of this note um again quite marvelous it, again it always pays to look at both sides of the note um they won't all be 100 percent full like this one here you'll sometimes and for the most part find partial wedding transfers this one, $133. That's a lot of scratch for this one. And uh, yeah, the market is just crazy for these things. Now, that's something you don't see uh, every day. A later issue, Jefferson Nickel, it's got that newer obverse from 2006 or whatever it was. This is a 2000 teens. It's a Philadelphia struck coin. It's got a uh, pretty substantial curved clip on there even has some Blakesley effect if you look right up behind jefferson's uh hair head area you can see the flatness of that part of the rim which is very consistent to a legitimate clip uh this one right here oh what did this one sell for 33 dollars and 78 cents so again a really phenomenal coin and uh one that you just don't see every day but when you do come across it, if you know the diagnostics that that click into this particular mint error then you're going to do okay you know always be on the lookout for coins like this by the way that show up at uh like coin shows in dealer bargain bins i see these all the time for like two to five bucks and they are they they are a boon for any ebay professional selling on there i'm telling you it makes all the difference in the world we also have this 89p jefferson nickel had struck off center by about 70 percent again very sexy here full date readable mint mark uh again it's what you want to see this one sold for 49 dollars and 78 cents and uh state quarters uh there's a few of the states that you could uh, peruse through um and find these cud die breaks uh because the the way that these are designed on the reverse some of the designs go nearly to the close of, uh, close to the edge of the rim uh which makes it a weak spot on the die uh after many strikes you know a piece of the die will fracture and break and fall off thereby creating anomalies that look like this this is one of the tougher ones this montana state quarter 2007 p it's a much later later dated issue as well uh so this one 19.99 someone got a good deal on this one 
Uh, holy strike through Batman. What happened here? Uh, 2004 Lincoln Memorial sense, probably the most perfect beacon of imperfection that you could lay eyes on. Um, there was something on that die, you know, uh, it, it's probably, it's probably, um, you know, uh, probably not grease. It might, I mean, there's probably a little grease in there, but it could be like a harder substance like a detached lamination from another coin um, or plating or something to that effect. It could be a piece of wood. It could be um, something. It's something large enough to be on that die and therefore strike this puppy. Uh, I'm thinking more along the, the lines of like wood, you know, on this one. Um, and keep in mind, 2004, it's a copper plated zincan. And you don't see any zinc on the reverse, do you, through all that mess? Right, which helps corroborate a strike through and not a contact mark. A contact mark that large would actually bend the coin, and you would see that on the obverse. Um, so, not surprised at all. This one ended up selling for $106.90 with 33 bits. This is a absolute bomb of a mint era on a much later dated Lincoln cent. Here's a 1981 $20 bill, okay? Uh, no, that black line on the front of the note is not an error. It's either um, handwriting or a partial teller stamp is what that is. Um, not really paying too much close attention to the front of the note. It looks normal. The serial numbers look okay. There's no mismatches. There's no alignment shift doodads going on here. But when we flip it over, Ooh, we got a big old ink smear right on the uh, the reverse on that right side, which happens. But you normally see this type of error on much older notes, you know, going back maybe 30, 40 years. Um, so again, again, it pays to flip your note over. Every time you look at one, flip it over. You just never know what you're going to find. This one right here sold for $99.95. I mean, need I say more? The market is just absolutely active with all sorts of great selling activity. You need to get your share here. How about how about a later dated, colorized twenty dollar bill, right? Yeah, we see these all day long coming out ATM machines and all that great stuff. Two thousand nine twenty dollar bill fold over error. So there was a, a corner fold on that sheet, and then it was printed over. I mean, how cool is that? Here's the reverse of that note right there. Um, yeah, you bet your bottom dollar this thing circulated. Look at that center fold there, and look at a little bit of. You know, um, just the, the rub on the paper, you know. Uh, the, this one right here is not full on anyone. This one had seen a few cash registers. And it's, again, hard to believe with that thing unfolded. So um, what do we got here on this one? How about $299.95 for a blockbuster sale on this one? That is, oh my gosh. I, I mean, I, I've just been thoroughly impressed with some of the selections here this week that aren't even in graded holders. I mean, you know, and here's one of my favorite cherry picks. You should always be looking up close at every 1882 O Morgan dollar. This is a very common date, folks. So let's deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah, this thing's damaged. It's all scratched up on the front, um, but this is the infamous and well-known VAM variety O over S. So this is a absolute monster over mint mark and it's a very popular one too there's a close-up you can see the inner curl of the s inside that o right there that's what they usually look like okay this is this is a no doubter here 49 dollars 95 considering it's damaged because outside of that this is a coin that you could pick up for between 27 and 30 dollars all right so uh, again that's probably more of the silver side of things but if this coin did not have any of that obverse damage, it's probably a sixty to hundred dollar coin. Again, really depending on details and design here. Need one here, first Roosevelt dime, probably the last. Uh, Nineteen ninety nine P Roosevelt dime, off center by I would say thirty percent. Pretty cool. Roosevelt dimes getting all sorts of love these days. How about $43.69, 37 bids. Again, another active sale. Uh, be on the lookout for these Roosevelt dime errors, especially at coin shops and shows. 
uh, I know dealers that sell these for dirt cheap, but you know, there's a whole hidden agenda, a whole other market on eBay and whatnot and all that. People are looking for very attractive mint air Roosevelt dimes. Um, yeah, this is, it's not a full hundred percent winning wet ink transfer. This is a partial as you can see, but boy, this thing is so strong. 1977, $1 bill, uh, back to front wet ink transfer. And I think the seller even said it's a front to back as well. It's very light. It's, you can see it at the bottom there. Uh, some of the black ink, it's very light, which, which means that it's a very light impression, um, of whatever leftover ink, uh, you know, was on that impression cylinder. Um, so 250 bucks is what this one sold for. Um, again, it's a very nice, well-presented note. You come across things like these, uh, they, they are a surefire winner in today's market. Uh, very cool cut die break, 1953 S, Lincoln Weed Scent. You can see that big old cut die break there on the obverse right at the base of Lincoln's bus. Again, a piece of the die had fallen out just through general wear and tear of the machinery and the dies. This is a common occurrence. Um, so this one here, $49.99, and you guess it, I'm going to say it, cuds are king in today's market. And uh, this is a cool one here. This is actually a nice higher grade 1936 S over S repunch mint mark. I believe this is the FS501 in the Cherry Pickers Guide. And the coin seems to be in really nice shape, save for a few contact marks on, you know, on the, the, the buffalo and on uh, the Indian's cheek there on the obverse. And here's what this one looks like. Uh, the close-ups aren't the best, but you can see that secondary S mint mark is punched south. This is a very clear RPM, one of my favorites to hunt for, by the way. And as far as sales, how about $51.44? You know, um, these things could go a lot more pricey, you know, like higher grade mid-state 65 and up examples. Tend to sell for hundreds of dollars on this one. Uh, yeah, if it wasn't bad enough that we had one colorized $20 bill, um, again, a later issue, we have two of them. Another fold over on this 2004A $20 bill. Again, this is the look of the $20 bill that continuously comes out of an ATM machine. It hasn't changed one bit in the last 24 years. Check out that, um, that fold over and then the print over onto the actual fold, the back of that note is showing the green seal and the serial number. Again, very, very attractive. Generally, these are best reserved for a graded holder. So, you know, again, that whole that whole idea that you have to grade something for it to be worth more is simply not true in today's error and variety world. This one ended up selling for five cents shy of 500 bucks, $499.99. Sign me up. Uh, there's a reverse right there. Again, this thing had circulated. That is what's wild to me is things that are so blatantly wrong tend to get passed up by, by you know, by eyeballs that just, they, they are not ready to, to look for things like this. I don't know. That boggles my mind. Uh, 1918 Link, uh, Lincoln Wheat Set with um, some detached lamination. We call it D-Lam on the reverse. And then there's a few pieces that are still attached Sorry, there's like sirens going on outside. You guys probably hear it. It's like dogs barking and sirens. I mean, what the heck is going on in my PCMR? I, I mean, that's kind of like a red alert. The, the mark is just, you know, just crazy right now that all of the things are happening. Uh, that's loud and proud. Yeah, lamination. What are we looking at on this? $22.45. Again, it's a lower grade condition coin, but still a very strong sale. Uh, 1970s Denver Lincoln Memorial set. This thing looks like dog meat, but again, look closely. You got to know your mint errors here, folks. This coin was actually a planchet, which is a blank, uh, a blank planchet that was split in half before it was struck. So that's why you can see kind of like the, um, striations there on the reverse. Okay. That's the actual, uh, metal mix of that uh that planchet after it had split all right so the coin is actually thin it's a thin coin uh this one weighs 1.9 grams which is um a standard lincoln cent a copper one is 3.11 so it's over a gram light 
you know, because of that. This one sold for $47.45. And the final one for today, folks, this is the, the biggie. This is the one right here that I would say 99.9% .9 of you do not aware, do, are not aware that this one even exists on the planet. And that's a real shame. Um, because between this and the 66 DDO and DDR are two of the most overlooked varieties in the Lincoln Memorial series. And it just does not make any sense. This is a very strong variety. This is a double to die reverse. It's the FS801. It's a cherry picker's guide um, staple. And uh, what are we looking at here? You can't really tell a whole lot just by looking at the full obverse and reverse here. Check out the doubling and the notching on the United States of America on E Pluribus Unum. Again, this is where you're going to have that 10 times power magnifier to really help you out here. If you don't have a magnifier when you're hunting through these coins, you're not going to have any sort of success. Uh, unless you got some super atomic Superman eyeballs, you need the magnification. And check these out here. Look at the initials of Frank Gasparro, even doubled as well. E Pluribus Unum, doubled. Uh, just everything about this coin uh, screams rarity. All right, there's not a whole lot of these out there, but I think that's more of a classic case of no nobody really paying attention to this one. And as a, as a result, this one ended up selling for $132, ladies and gents, which is as expensive as like a, a comparable 1983 FS801 double die reverse. And that one is a whole heck of a lot stronger, but there's more of those that exist out in circulation today. Look for this one. You will not be disappointed. And um, rest assured, there is a collector market that is looking for more of these um, on eBay and everywhere else. So that's going to go ahead and do it. Man, that was fun. Information provided in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not financial advice. Keep that in mind. Please collect and or grade your coins responsibly. That's it, ladies and gents. Hope you, you guys had a great weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. We'll be back on on Monday for the Monday Market Report. So until then, keep on collecting, my friends. Have fun and best of luck. Take care.